now we come to the mainstay of uh, of this uh, uh, presentation and that is uh, uh, issues related with uh, sodium basically so as i as i was mentioning uh, uh, sodium is basically the handler uh, is the handle that the body uses for ecf volume and why ecf volume is important uh, if you want to remember it in one line uh, volume is to do with pressure please remember that volume is to do with pressure generally speaking ECF volume is to do with art arterial blood pressure or simply blood pressure. So you increase ECF volume, blood pressure goes up. You decrease ECF volume, blood pressure goes down. Very important relationship. Okay. Uh, then water balance is to do with osmolarity. So water is to, in human body. These are the rules. Sodium is to do with volume. Water is to do with osmolarity. Okay, why osmolarity is important? You know this. Uh, we have done this in the first uh, two lectures of this series. Uh, osmolarity has all sorts of uh, effects on uh, cell volume, and uh, uh, and subsequently uh, the way the cell would behave uh, would change if you if you start uh, uh, changing the volume and osmolarity around it, or or within it. Okay, so that that is basically handled by uh, handing water and a very cool thing is uh, this can also be asked in, a, in an assessment what is the single effect uh, the single effect is uh, you can remember it by remembering the phrase singling out uh, don't write it down it's just to uh, explain to you how uh, you, you may remember this you single out uh, the solute from the solvent so the body has this ability but uh, of of separating sodium from water now this is you may you may think what's the big deal here it is a big deal okay because sodium is a very effective osmol which basically means that it doesn't travel alone it takes up water around it uh, surrounding it so whenever you want to generally generally speaking reabsorb water and you don't specify uh, the renal quote unquote system uh, generally, so each molecule of sodium will be accompanied by several molecules of water. However, when in a specific situation you only need to uh, reabsorb water and not let sodium drag with it, or reabsorb sodium and and uh, you really are not bothered about the water, uh, this ability is uh, available for you in the kidney. And this is called the single effect. So you can reabsorb uh, sodium without water, which is uh, uh, a trick that kidney knows well, and you need it uh, in uh, water homeostasis. We'll be dealing with this uh, single effect uh, properly, uh, not region wise. I will be looking at things from the substance point of view. So sodium handling by the nephron is being uh, shown to you here, and you can see that proximal contribute a maximum the largest share of sodium reabsorption takes place here 67 percent then you have thick ascending limb of group of Henle, uh, in which there is a uh, 25 percent uh, reabsorbed uh, sodium is reabsorbed over here and and in the in, in between these two the, there's about eight percent of sodium which is which can be and this is important which can may or may not be reabsorbed from here and less than one percent is excreted uh, normally speaking now this again is a normal situation we are not talking about any volume contraction or expansion this is just normal another point to note is that 67 and this 25 percent is fixed okay this is going to happen no matter what generally speaking unless they are at a constant gfr of course uh, and 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 constant gfr means the flow velocity is is normal as well 67 percent and 25 percent is constant the variability it comes here at 5% at DCT and 3% at the collecting duct. Uh, variability, why? Because of uh, this, this reabsorption here in this region is, is affected by aldosterone. Okay, aldosterone, as we have mentioned in bits, uh, is the sodium reabsorption hormone released by adrenal uh, gland and uh, it's it's uh, one of the main stimulus of aldosterone is uh, you know this it's angiotensin 2 okay 
this is a good diagram to know the overall handling of sodium. Now, if you could uh, uh, delve into some specific details uh, briefly, this of, of course does not uh, replace your reading of Brighton and you can always uh, uh, read it region wise as well to enhance the depth of your knowledge. Uh, so sodium here is, is, is shown, uh, I beg your pardon, PCT cell is shown. This is the proximal tubule, uh, early cell PCT, and this is the late proximal uh, uh, tubule cell, okay? There are differences, uh, we will we'll look, we'll look at that. So this is the lumen, this is the luminal border of the cell, and this is the basolateral border of the cell. Now remember, remember one trick here. Always remember that sodium potassium ATPase at the basolateral border is abundantly found along all the length of the tubule, whether it's PCT or elsewhere. This, this ATPase is there uh, just about everywhere. Okay, and you know what this ATPase does. It throws out three, potassi uh, three sodiums and bring in two potassiums. So it constantly creates a, a, a deficiency or a gradient for sodium. Okay, so sodium concentration in the cell, said in another way, uh, is less, is kept at a lower end because of the constant working of sodium potassium ATPase. Now, this is an ingenious method uh, in the reabsorption capital of the tubule, which is the PCT. So see how sodium is then manipulated to do all sorts of things, okay? whether it's uh, sodium glucose co-transport, sodium amino acid co-transport, uh, sodium uh, uh, along with various A9 co-transport or sodium and hydrogen anti, anti port transport. Sodium concentration gradient, which is created by sodium potassium ATPase, is, is coupled to uh, uh, do so much, uh, quantitatively so much at the PCT. Okay, so this is, these are those famous symport mechanisms uh, which bring in uh, the, the stuff like glucose, amino acid, and so on into the cell uh, by coupled transport. And then uh, there are uh, uh, dedicated transporters for each one of them at the basolateral border, uh, which brings it to the interstitium where it's picked by, not shown here, but it's picked by the peritubular uh, capillary network. And off it goes to the main blood. Uh, so you reclaim it, you reabsorb the whole, uh, the crucial things okay um so in this uh, there is important yes we've done this uh, the one one difference let's just do this first and then we'll do this one of the differences many main differences if you can spot it between these two cells is look at this cell look at what is being transported at the uh, apical or the luminal border then compare it here see any difference which is the uh, uh, anion uh, which is being uh, transported uh, within uh, the early cell and then the late cell. This, look at this. It's bicarbonate, basically, which is being uh, transported or reabsorbed here, and it's chloride in this case. Okay, so sodium chlo uh, sodium uh, is being dealt here not chloride this is one of the differences however in the late cell of the pct chloride is being is being also dealt with along with sodium okay so this is one of the differences uh, the proximal cells don't tend to uh, uh, deal with chloride but the later cells do okay so this is one thing now coming to this part so what does isoosmotic reabsorption means? Isoosmotic reabsorption is very crucial. Uh, it's very important to understand in this con context what is happening. At the PCT, remember this point please, it's very, very important. Equal part of uh, sodium uh, is picked up uh, along with equal part of water. Isoosmotic. So from the lumen, uh, if there is one ion of sodium which is transported inside the cell and then eventually to the blood, another molecule of water will accompany this sodium. Okay, so you don't the the, the fluid basically which enters the cell and then which enters the blood has the same osmolarity. There is no difference between water to sodium ratio, if you know what I mean. Okay, this. This PCT phenomena 
is called isoosmotic reabsorption. Now, there are very important implications uh, for this. So, when the filtrate, fresh filtrate from the glomerulus entered the lumen here in the PCT, it has a, it has a, it had an osmolarity of around 300 milliosmol uh, per 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 liter, right? Uh, we 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 remember the plasma osmolarity, and since it's the it's literally part of plasma that has filtered out at the glomerulus and now has it has entered the lumen in the PCT, uh, it is reflective of plasma. It was plasma uh, before it got filtered out, so the osmolarity will be 300. Now the volume the 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 osmolarity of uh, 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 this uh, fluid when it exits the pct and enters the loop of henle system the osmolarity is still 300 the volume has decreased very important to note the volume has decreased because you have reabsorbed so many things from it however the osmolarity is the same because of this phenomena that i've just explained sodium and water have been reabsorbed together so this is called isoosmotic reabsorption okay it's very important later on for you for us to differentiate between this type of reabsorption with what happens later on in the loop of henle especially in the loop of henle and then in the dct as well for those who who follow uh, angiotensin 2 once it's uh, once it's uh, available in abundance it triggers uh, sodium hydrogen antiport mechanism uh, is performance to a higher grade so it is normally working fine but when angiotensin 2 is available in abundance it triggers it it enhances its function so the perceptive student will quickly see hydrogen being more secreted in this scenario yes so you have a deficiency of ecf volume which triggered the angiotensin 2 system Angiotensin 2, when it came to play uh, at a higher concentration, uh, enhanced sodium hydrogen antiport mechanism, which basically meant uh, sodium was absorbed more to address the uh, uh, the decreased ECF volume. But at at, the, at 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 what expense? The expense of hydrogen. Hydrogen was excreted out. Okay, so this is called uh, contraction alkalosis. Contraction means volume contraction. ECF volume was contracted, and to to address that, this antiport mechanism was triggered. Uh, hydrogen was lost more than usual, which led to uh, alkalosis in the body fluids. Contraction alkalosis. Okay, uh, enough about PCT. Please do give it a formal read from your textbook, and uh, things should settle down. Now at LOH loop of Henle, uh, we are not very much concerned about the thin descending limb. We are basically, uh, and not the thin uh, ascending limb, we are basically concerned with the thick ascending limb. Those thin segments basically deal with water and other stuff, less with sodium, but it's the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle, which basically is shown here, this. So this thin, descending and thin ascending is is it doesn't do much uh, in terms of sodium it's the thick ascending limb which basically deals with 25 percent so it's there's a significant uh, amount of uh, sodium that gets picked up here uh, so this is that amount and uh, uh, what happens in this uh, section is what we are discussing here so you can see that there is a big sim porter uh, on the luminal surface which basically takes two sodium, uh, uh, um, one sodium, two chloride, and one potassium in one go. So all uh, four molecules uh, of ions from the lumen into the, into the cell um, while the potassium is, uh, is secreted. Uh, the sodium and chloride are, uh, uh, are basically uh, reabsorbed to the interstitium. Uh, potassium can be secreted and is also reabsorbed here. Uh, so that's one thing. The main, the main point here in this, in, this, in this segment is that this symporter plays a very important part in concentration of urine scenario. Remember this. We'll be discussing this under water homeostasis. Uh, this symport mechanism is crucial in concentration of urine. The second point uh, to note here is that sodium is reabsorbed without water. So this is the single effect. This, this segment of of the of this of the nephron the thick ascending limb of loop of henle 
this is where the single effect takes place sodium is reabsorbed but water is not allowed to follow it and the reason it's it's uh, and the way it's done is that uh, cells here are not permeable to water this is indeed the segment of the nephron is called the diluting segment basically uh, solutes are removed from it uh, so that the filtrate becomes dilute it's called the diluting segment okay and even the uh, paracellular pathways the tight junctions between cells are so tight that they don't allow water to come in while at, while you are so you are basically uh, separating sodium from its body water in this segment this is the single effect okay this is another very important point about this segment and the sodium transport here is peculiar in this sense please note this um, the third point is uh, uh, adh antidiuretic hormone stimulates this this transport again adh will come in uh, very heavily when we talk about home, uh, concentrating urine in water homeostasis so we will talk about this in detail over there but this is the third point which is important the fourth is this thing called, uh, which is written here it's furosemide it's a diuretic it's a drug which is used uh, to increase urine formation uh, especially in patients uh, who are suffering from hypertension or heart disease so that their ec volume is uh, uh, is not overburdened and hence they don't have high blood pressures so th these type of drugs are given to them uh, puresamide uh, which basically blocks this channel all, all this system it blocks it so these ions are not reabsorbed they uh, they they just uh, go, go from thick limb thick ascending limb loop of henle to dct and collecting duct very importantly along with the fluids and 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 hence they are excreted of the body taking all that volume with them uh, which is important okay uh, in, uh, in in patients of hypertension uh, so furosemide is a diuretic remember that this is the fourth point okay okay so we now move on uh, this slide shows you uh, two cells okay so this is we are at the dct now the distal convoluted tubule uh, you know the place where sodium is reabsorbed variably under the influence of aldosteron so the presence of aldosterone or the absence of it will will make all the difference and you should remember that aldosterone is under the influence of angiotensin 2 and you should remember when angiotensin 2 is released so we are in the dct uh, just to give you the reference this is where we are this is this is where we are uh, the, the whole dc segment which then uh, uh, goes into uh, the collecting duct so there are there will be early cells we call them the early dct cells and then the later part of the dct there is a slight differentiation these, the, these this whole segment basically has two types of specialized cells the principal cells and the alpha intercalated cells okay once again there are specialized cells here uh, which are called principal cells found only here and alpha intercalated cells okay alpha intercalated cells are to do with potassium and hydrogen and hence will not be today's uh, uh, topic however the principal cell is the prime sodium uh, uh, dealer of this segment and it it basically corresponds with aldosterone aldosterone's target uh, cell is principal cell okay so hence we will be talking about principal cell and what is it and uh, what's going on so this this basically is a principal cell but before i come to this uh, in the early dct cell of the early dct uh, uh, you can see that it also deals with sodium and chloride and eventually chloride is reabsorbed here and sodium you know what's happening here it, the atp is uh, the, the important thing is this uh, core transport is basically uh, can be blocked by another uh, class of diuretics uh, so we we discuss furosemide uh, that is uh, at the level of the thick ascending limb of group of Henle. <clears throat> while thiazide diuretic basically is early dc early dct cells blocking this uh, and if you block it what will happen is that sodium won't be reabsorbed sodium stays in the lumen along with its water and its uh, 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 drained out by urine uh, taking along its water and hence uh, the, the extra volume 
uh, that get the body gets rid of the diuretic effect helps with the ECF overload overburden of volume uh, again this uh, diuretic uh, is used in hypertensives to reduce their blood pressure you really need to be okay with the volume pressure relationship all right this is the mainstay of uh, one of the prime functions of the kidney now coming to the uh, the principal cell okay uh, uh, a word of caution all these diagrams the blue ones the blue boxes they are from brs and hence the lumen is it's just a little detail the lumen is, uh, is shown on the left but the basolateral border is shown on the right this is from guyton uh, in this, uh, the lumen is shown on right hand side and the basolateral border is on the uh, left hand side. Just a little uh, uh, caution here. Okay, so what's happening? What do you see in the uh, principal cell here? This is the principal cell. Okay, so you see that the sodium potassium ATPase at the basolateral border is doing its business, keeping uh, sodium concentration down within the cell. This is then manipulated by the apical side, the apical border, and sodium is being reabsorbed. Now, something, is, something else is happening. Sodium is being reabsorbed, and potassium is being secreted, something to note. So principal cells reabsorb sodium, and they secrete potassium, okay? And this, this whole thing is, is uh, stimulated by aldosterone. So principal cells of the DCT, when they are acted upon by aldosterone, they increase their sodium reabsorption and as a consequence, they increase the potassium secretion. The, the, this has very important implication. Uh, so sodium, uh, sodium uh, gets reabsorbed and sodium is linked with ECF volume. I keep on repeating this so that it solidifies in your mind but it's also coupled with potassium secretion and potassium you know is a crucial ion for heart and all the other other matters so uh, basically basically what is happening is sodium is being sodium reabsorption is being linked with potassium excretion okay this is an important component and it will be tested in various ways uh, so, for example, if there is a tumor of the adrenal gland, which is secreting abnormally high aldosterone levels. Now, these, this has all sorts of implications in this patient for sodium and potassium homeostasis. Now you understand what's going on. Okay. So this person will abnormally reabsorb sodium and very importantly, get rid of extra potassium and then go into all sorts of cardiac abnormalities. Yes, so here is an example of an endocrine disorder messing up a kidney function and it's linked to a heart function problem as well. So now you understand the complexity uh, which is related with uh, 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 this uh, principal cell. Okay, um, that's one thing. Uh, okay, so there are sodium channel blockers again. These are uh, diuretics which act uh, on the, uh, the, so, uh, the channel side. They block it and do the same thing which I've discussed that diuretics do increase urine volume. Then there are other um, uh, di diuretic class of, uh, class of diuretics uh, which uh, act on uh, aldosterone. So they, they compete with uh, aldosterone to bind to the uh, receptor which binds to aldosterone and hence they uh, they don't let aldosterone do what it does which is sodium reabsorption and the attendant water reabsorption again that will have a diuretic effect all these are diuretics it's just the site of their action is different sodium channel blockers literally block the channel itself while aldosterone antagonists compete with aldosterone so that it doesn't do its job uh, both the result of both is the same uh, a, 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 a footnote about this is that this by the way is also a cell uh, which uh, is involved in water reabsorption via the adh so you can imagine it's a very busy cell uh, it's reabsorbing sodium it's secreting potassium under the influence of aldosterone while uh, it's re it can reabsorb water when adh is present it's important to note 